Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here from uh, from the GCCM Berlin. We'll uh, we'll have the hybrid uh, topic. <laughs> Sorry, the, the the topic will be not so much hybrid, but maybe in actual fact it could well be. Ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, sponsored by New Telco, um, uh, it's how data centers um, and internet exchange providers, new business models, can help to meet the cable current and future digital demand. And uh, I'm very honored to have uh, Saeed uh, virtually uh, with us. Um, so Saeed, maybe please introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, so I'm uh, Semi Saeed, uh, the Chief uh, Security Officer of Tunisia Telecom, uh, the first operator in Tunisia. We operate on uh, fixed uh, mobile, uh, internet, uh, cloud services. So um, I'm an engineer from uh, Subcom Tunisia, and at the same time, I'm uh, an MBA from uh, pa Paris Dauphine, France. Uh, I'm the security director since uh, 2015, and then in previous lives, I was uh, the operation and maintenance uh, director for uh, mobile networks and uh, the internal uh, audit director for uh, about six years uh, before uh, being the security director. That's it. Thank you so much and welcome to the to, to the panel and uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge with uh, with the other experts which are actually sitting live here with me. So Jens, maybe I can give you the words quickly yeah, to introduce you. yourself. Please. Hello everybody, good afternoon. Uh, Jens Leuchters and I'm a country manager, general manager, and managing director from uh, New Telco, New Telco in Frankfurt. We are uh, having the honor to be the sponsor, so we will have the keynote today. So I will introduce the company a little bit more in detail during the keynote. Thank you very much, Jens. Austin. Thank you, Eric. My name is Carsten Schiefner. I'm an independent consultant uh, for all sorts of uh, aspects of internet infrastructure uh, at the intersection of technology, policy, and economy. So that is essentially where my clients, as I said, from internet infrastructure businesses uh, would work with me and I would work with my clients. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carsten. Jürgen, last yeah, but not least. <laughs> last but not least, uh, Jürgen Lange. I am a whole sales manager Germany within Global Connect. Uh, covering the international wholesale part in Germany for Global Connect. And we are a pan Scandinavian fiber net operator running our fiber network from northern Germany to Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland. Okay, thank you very much. And welcome, gentlemen, for, for, for being here. Honor having you. So, Jens, um, if I may, uh, may invite you to. Uh, to share with us uh, your, your, your presentation. What are you gonna talk about? Well, first of all, I'm going to introduce the company. So we'll tell a little bit uh, about New Telco, who we are and what we are doing. Uh, for people who don't know us, uh, I think it's important to understand. And then of course, I'm going to try to bridge from there to the topic uh, with a, some announcement I am going to make, which is, I think, our answer to the question. Fantastic. So may I invite you please to uh, yes. go to the stand and have uh, and start the presentation with us. And uh, so looking forward to uh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen here in the room and everybody out there. It's an honor for me to have the keynote today uh, and to be the sponsor of the webinar of today. Um, I'm going to introduce the company a little bit. Uh, I will try to make it as short and interested as possible, also in order to save enough time uh, for the discussion we have. So, um, and first of all, uh, just two words. I'm pretty happy that we are live in Berlin and that we are going to restart a little bit the normal going step-by-step step back to the normal life. And I have to say personally, if uh, I have attended a couple of uh, uh, panels, panel sessions, uh, also with uh, with Eric. They were all online. I was not there in person, so it feels a little bit different. Yeah. So I think it's uh, it's a new experience again. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, first of all, let me give you some key facts of New Telco quickly. So we have our headquarters in Frankfurt uh, and we are founded in 2005. Uh, we are 
actually serving around 450 mainly carriers and typo companies. Uh, and we do services or we offer our services actually for these customers in more than 60 plus countries. Um, so as you see here, there is some description of the services and of the business we are doing. I'm not going to deep in any of them, but in a few I will. And this is also uh, the ones we are most focusing on. So I think the first one uh, and most important one for us is data center and, and uh, co-location. So what we are doing here is, you know, we're offering high flexible equipment housing and that starts from single unit and it goes up to large rooms for our customers. What we are doing uh, in terms of tier classes, we are offering services from tier two up to tier four. So, and we have this type of, uh, of four categorized queries. So the tier one is more an echo uh, standard. So that's uh, good for uh, small hosters who are actually looking to get cheap co-location or doesn't have enough money to pay uh, a huge money for, for racks or for units. Uh, then we have also a carrier class uh, co-location, which of course is currently our main business. And that's mainly in Frankfurt in the uh, data center Kleierstraße, Rebstöcker Straße, which is the core and heart point in Germany where mainly all carriers meet uh, for globally. So that's a very, very important place to be. Um, then, of course, we have also a tier three class and uh, also we offer a, a tier four class uh, data center. I'm going to exp uh, explain a little bit more about that later. They air conditioned uh, tier two to tier three. They are as energy efficient as they could be. So we are doing cold and hot isos and the forest. So we're trying to reduce the energy we use uh, to a maximum and where it is possible. It's not always possible. Uh, but we are on a good way there. Uh, one of our differentiator here is our 24 seven service that our customers are getting from us included if they are in our, in our data centers and we are very flexible and uh, you know, our customers experience with us are very good there. Um, and how we're doing this is our field service and remote hand support our own people. So if you call us, you normally have an, a new taco guy on the phone or lady and also these guys are performing the work and also going to your rack if you need some work from us. And of course it's secure. Um, on top of that or logical works, we have an uh, interconnection and uh, connectivity services. So, you know, also one of our, in our company name, uh, you see New Telco, the interconnection company, of course, at the place I was just mentoring, the carriers need a lot of interconnections. And that is also what we're doing for them. So you can have it from us turnkey or just partly. And we're doing it two ways. It's either physical, so it's the standard fiber uh, cross connect, or we do it logical uh, via an Ethernet platform. It's one at 10G gig ports the customers can get from us. And then we're using our platform as a marketplace. So the more participants are on that platform, the more attractive it will be. And it helps also to digitalize the interconnection uh, space a little bit. So field service remote hand support, it's also a very important uh, differentiator for us because that is really what matters a lot to our customers. And that is what we are much better than the giant data center hall providers are. Uh, we still, because this is just a matter of size, we are still agile and flexible. Uh, and that is what our customers really need from us, especially when they are outside from Germany. Uh, they're using us as an extended our support uh, unit and they're calling us and we're performing quite often work on their behalf. So last but not least, uh, we are having a stack of hardware. So any type of hardware from a, uh, from a server technology up to transport technology, uh, we offer our customers in two models. Number one is the classical sale model. So you can buy it from us 
get a license from us, to get the maintenance from us, but also we are doing uh, CapEx to OpEx models for our customers. This is very important for customers that need to have a POP, for instance, in Germany, but don't have an own legal entity, so they are not allowed to own the hardware. So this is where we come onto the on, into the play where they ask us to uh, do an equipment as a service uh, for the customers. So last but not least, just to mention all what I was saying before are the ingredients for our virtual pop solutions. So again, this is a turnkey solution for our customers who want to have a physical, who wants to have a pop, but it doesn't need to be their own pop. So here we, we build everything. So all what I was just saying, we were offer, offering our customers uh, local as well global. So that's also why we are not just in Frankfurt, we have a lot of installations around the world. It goes from New York to Hong Kong. Uh, it goes to South Africa. So this is what the customer wants we will do. So we are very solution focused in the case. So I think that should be enough in terms of uh, telling you a little bit about New Taco. We are, by the way, here all days, uh, two days or three days uh, no, until tomorrow it's end. So if you want to talk to us, please come and see us. So, so now comes a little bit more to the topic. Um, so how they, DCs and IX providers new business model can help to meet cable current and future digital demands. Um, I was picking a picture and the picture you see here is the data center landscape in Frankfurt. So, and you can see, you see some cluster and in all in these places, by the way, we are uh, on the left down with our data center in Frankfurt. Um, but all you can see, these are the places where the big data hall, data fabrics, data center providers are located. So these are the entities, these are the interactions, these are the digital realities and the force. Um, and on the right left, you, the cluster you see with the name Austin, this is by the way where the interaction uh, is located. And which is also one of the key business driver for the Frankfurt area, for uh, for cable providers, for data center providers, uh, and of course. So, what we believe here, what do we need to do, and how can we help and answer the question? How can we help to meet cable current and future demand business providers? What is it? How does it look like? A, a cable lands at a landing station, so then it's there. How does it come from a landing station? to interaction, for instance, in Frankfurt. You know, if you are know the geographic from Germany, there is uh, other, there's the North Sea, but if the, uh, the uh, sea cable comes from Asia or from Africa or from wherever, it will normally land in South, uh, South Europe. So there are two, two possible answers. So I, A, number one, you have a cable provider who brings this port somewhere near to, the, to an IX provider or the IX provider would come closer to it. That's fine, but it's still missing one important piece. It misses the data center because again, you need a data fabric uh, where all the data uh, will be stored, where the, uh, pro where the servers are standing, where the cloud providers are. So the thing is really, it's a definitely need for all of them to work as close as possible together. And there is not a right or wrong answer and not the best or, or a solution. So we will have to see how can we meet and how can we meet uh, the, the, the business models each other together and, and turn it together into, into a solution. And there's another one which uh, is important. Uh, how do you bring this even further into a region? Because the, the picture tells you one thing here. You need to do any business, any business, and this is not just a carrier. So the carrier is serving a B2B customer, an enterprise customer. It means everybody needs to come to Frankfurt or to Amsterdam or to London or wherever. But what about, and this is in case of Germany, it's a typical Mittelstand country, which is driving the economy of Germany. The Mittelstand companies are not in Frankfurt. They are surrounding, they are somewhere, but not at they're in countries, names you never heard. They're the hidden champions and they need this kind of services. So we need to bring it even further, closer to them. Um, so, and this is how we're doing it. So our answer is uh, 
or the question, does Germany need another data center to it? And our answer is yes, not just one data center, because you see the traffic globally is still growing. The demand for data centers is still growing. The pandemic has giving a big push to the digitalization. So anything is growing. So we need this data fabrics. Um, we need this data fabrics for carbon reason, reasons because we need to get it sent, sent we get, need to get all the servers into a center that has a very good PoE, for instance, in order to save power. So our answer to this is we're building a new data center. So, and distance matters here. Distance matters means distance matters for specific customers. If you think about your customer who does have a need for, uh, for long distance because of disaster recovery, for instance, financial institutions, the BaFin, they will have a clear, uh, clear uh, rule how far away your disaster recovery data center will need to be from your main data center. So some distance matters. And this is one aspect, but this other aspect is, uh, Again, you need to go into the region. You need to work with, uh, with loc local uh, and regional system integrator to come closer to your customers and be able to address their needs as close as possible where they are located. So what are we doing here? You can see this green light line. On the left-hand side, you see Frankfurt where you, I, I saw you in the landscape before. On the right hand, you see the little city of Karlstein. Am I? I'm sure you never heard of it, but this is the place where we are building a data center. And this is a very interesting one also for the, uh, for the major of the city because his business centers become more attractive. Because if you are going, through, if you are driving through Germany, for instance, and I'm pretty sure in other countries in Europe it's the same, and we are, when you are looking uh, the business areas, what do you see? You see logistics, 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 logistics. Huge spaces, lorry, lorry, lorry. Less uh, people, not many people working there, and none of these companies are really paying a lot of tax. So how attractive a, a business area is for an IT company to come, not at all. So they are driven, they need to go somewhere where an IX is, where a data center is and where to get global connectivity. So they need to go into a city like Amsterdam, Frankfurt, London, you name it. Too expensive, no space. Uh, they are normally, they're coming from far outside. It, probably they don't want to be there. So we do the following is we are, we have a quiet building and we are just uh, build, we have a data center under construction here the fiber distance is we're having two fibers fiber distance is between 35 and 40 kilometers and with doing this it will be very attractive for it partners it supplier system integrator developers etc cetera, etc cetera, to be close to the data center because it has one specific, very important topic that it need to have, it need to have a connection to a huge IX, which it will have. It has a 100G port of, uh, of, uh, from DKIX. So if anyone comes there, he's directly connected with the world and he has no problem with a legacy internet connection. So this is how it looked like. And this is how is our answer as a, as a uh, medium term IT company we have to do and build a data center and we have to bridge the needs from all the IXs, the fiber providers, but also the customers in the region. And this is why we made a decision to go a little bit into the region. Some key facts, which are very important here, we have a availability of five megawatt, which is now, of course, compared to a large data hall fabric provider, it's 20% it's of what they can offer. But this hall is not built to host uh, to host uh, uh, large cloud providers, large hyperscalers. Of course, it's designed for for companies who have a smaller demand. Um, the very important thing here is we have around seven hundred fifty square meter of data hall. A very unique thing and important thing is from the PowerPoint of view. It's a 
tier four data center. So we have two independent power supplier and each of them are, uh, can, uh, can cover up to five megawatt. So the cooling system is tier three. It's a high security data center SE3 class. It's a, as I said, it's becoming a DKIX enabled node. We're starting with a 100G port. In addition to it, two independent fiber providers uh, that are connected to our uh, Frankfurt Metro network. So all the cluster you have seen on the Frankfurt map before are automatically connected with it. Um, so, and of course we are energy and carbon green sustainable as we can. As we can means as much we can pay for because this is a very in, uh, uh, expensive investment, the more green you want to be, the more expensive it will be, but the market is not really willing to pay for. So you have to find a little bit of middle ground. Why we are decided to go for an existing building, because if you build, this is already saving 70% of carbon emission compared if you build a new building, because it's already there in the concrete, you don't need to do it. So we were, I think we find the balance, how we can do it. And again, this is the new data center under construction. Uh, we'll be ready for service Q2, Q3 next year. And uh, we are very excited about it. And again, our answer is how, that we meet uh, the needs from the IXs and from the cable providers because we help them to bring them closer to the customers and we help them, the carriers also, to get them closer to their markets. So we expiring interconnect, interconnection expert expiring into the region, our answer to the topic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Th thank you, Jens, and uh, thank you for sharing, uh, let's say, the knowledge and also uh, the latest information about the uh, opening of, of, of your new uh, data center. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I would like to do is, um, uh, I would immediately would like to bridge this actually into our, into our panel discussion. So, um, uh, this distinguished gentlemen are here already live uh, with me and we have um, uh, of course say we have them in uh, Sami in uh, in, uh, in in Tunisia so um listening to you um and that's a bit off let's say the the thing you mentioned to be as green as possible where you to find the balance to meet your customers demand and what they want to pay for now I know that Germany is probably, I think, minimally in the top three or top five of the most expensive countries, which with regards to, 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 to power. Yeah. So I foresee immediately then looking at, that, at those uh, KPIs, that is a huge challenge, although it's a huge challenge for everybody in, in, in Germany. But still, um, how is it possible for you, Jens, and, and for new telco? still to find let's say that balance because you have that urge and that push and that hopefully maybe some subsidies from, from, from mm -hmm. the government that would be nice for once but but where do you how do you find that balance and and what do you think can still be improved on the green side but maybe also on the demand side from from our customers yeah it's a it's as you were saying it's a very challenging task and it has a number of dimensions uh, so Number one, we are very active as New Telco due to the fact with the new data center, uh, we are taking part in uh, political discussions because again, one of the most driver uh, from the power cost in Germany is pretty much the same like it is from the fuel side is the tax. So the production price from the power is, it's a third and two third already is a tax price. Don't nail me on the numbers, but around this one, this ratio, and of course, you know, with the with the way that that uh, that uh, Germany has started to go to be uh, neutral, carbon neutral till twenty fifteen, and you know, we but still we are an energy hungry country, but we don't have any any nuclear plants anymore. Uh, and you know we also want to uh, will not have the coax plants anymore mm -hmm. but where shall the energy come from so how do we find it so there's one one aspect of the price that we hardly can influence mm -hmm. we have it right it's it, it's as you were saying it's already i think it's for sure this it in the top three if it is not I, maybe already the most expensive 
power in uh, across uh, Europe. Uh, it is, a, you know, for us, it's a problem. Uh, also for for the colleagues from the carrier team here, because if you compare a this this uh, this market with Amsterdam, for instance, where the power is at half, and if you are a huge or power less. or less, and if you are a huge power consumer, then it really matters. It matters if you pay fifteen cent per kilowatt or you pay thirty cent per kilowatt, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and the, the this is so again. So this is one thing that the community, the economy community, need to push the politic a lot, a lot. This is one thing, hardly to influence. What we can influence, of course, is the power efficiency usage, uh, but it finds also, you know, it. I think you know there is a there is a uh, there is a description what is efficient, what is high efficient and the poor. So if you are somewhere between uh, under three, one, 1 1.3, you're in a high efficient way. So we are thinking about 1.25, 1 1.28, 1 1.2, and it depends how much your capacity is in use, right? You mm -hmm. don't start at day one with 1.2. 1 you may start with 1.3, the more, uh, the more if your capacity and power usage is growing, uh, all your engines will be more uh, sustainable and will be more effective in a way. And then it goes down to one or two, maybe. But even going further down, you can do it. But then again, it's so expensive. And that's what you cannot, cannot, uh, uh, the customer are not willing to pay for, mm -hmm. you know. so. What are, what are you doing with the heat? So we were trying to find a model, the heat that we are producing, maybe we find a, uh, you know, a, a neighbor who wants to use the heat uh, for, for uh, heating the water, for instance. But again, it's, it's again, it's a calculation thing. And the data center of our side is not producing enough heat that it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So again, that is too little. Producing your own power is important. So we will have on the rooftops, we will have uh, photovoltaic uh, mm -hmm. uh, and solar that's a solar, yeah. solar uh, panel. Yeah, exactly. And of course, this is one of my thing, one of the most important things. Produce your power and use it where you produce it. Mm -hmm. So you do not need to transport it. Uh, because a, also you cannot store it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you can probably store it and, you know, warm water or you can store it in your in the data center in your batteries of course that is a very very mo the easiest thing how you save money and how you save carbon also you know that's that is the way how we think that's what we can do mm -hmm. all right that's and then you know don't expect i think the and we it cannot be expected too much from from the industry or from the companies to do it again under the under the circumstances that the, that the political landscape is giving us, it's it's a very difficult situation for us. Yeah, actually, they want to eat from both sides. Of course, <laughs> that's what they want. Yeah. To do. <laughs> All right, so so thank you very much, uh, Jens. So um, we looked at, we see that that, that, that I mean, especially in uh, in and um, through COVID nineteen pandemic, I th we all saw that the consumption of the bandwidth is 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 hugely increasing. Um, Karsten, for you, mm -hmm. um, what do you think are the, are the uh, where should all the providers meet each other? Because one has a need of this, the other one has a need of that. How can they work together actually in, an, uh, in, an, um, uh, in a better way and maybe as well in a more sustainable way? Well, how do you think that would be possible? Not entirely sure whether I, I got this question right, but uh, providers working together is that? Do you think of like a, a no? For 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 instance, the, the the data centers with with okay. the subsea cable operators, for, for yeah. instance, and they have a demand both ways, of course. And and how can how can uh, and and if we see that demand, how can we address it? And what can we well, what can we improve? What can we do better? I, I guess, um, and this is very well in the way already, but in terms of. Uh, Enz has mentioned this already. In terms of policy and politics, I guess uh, uh, providers, data set operators, as well as cable operators, um, can work and should work together in in in, in terms of convincing uh, politics to um, drop taxes on on the energy. Because uh, if that is predominantly being put on on, on data center operators, but uh, obviously cable operators are being affected by this as well. 
uh, because if um, the data centers would not do well, then obviously the cable operators would do, not do well either. So, and uh, hopefully as, as you, you will know, we're gonna have elections coming up uh, later on this, this month even, uh, federal elections here in, in Germany. Um, I'm, 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 I hope that uh, the next government will essentially really look into an extension of the um, uh, recovery energy mm -hmm. um, uh, taxes, which is um, with other industries in, in Germany are being extended from this particular tax, mm -hmm. like high, high um, energy consumption industries like steel industry, for mm -hmm. example, are being extended already, uh, when data centers are not yet. And um, I, I think to, to, to some extent, uh, I, I think this is sort of like double-faced. Mm -hmm. On the one hand side, uh, politics uh, tell the public uh, we need to be more digital and we need to be, do more in, in ICT and so forth. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, this uh, the recoverable, recoverable energy uh, tax is not yet lifted on, on the, the, the digital industry really. Yeah? So uh, in this instance, I, I think uh, the, the say, um, the uh, uh, respective associations, uh, trade associations like Eco, for example, are well on the way already. But uh, I guess that's, that's definitely something the next uh, the next government needs to tackle with uh, mm -hmm. how to deal with, uh, as Jens has mentioned, how to deal uh, with the uh, question of energy, really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, in in that instance, and. Um, in a more general aspect, um, I guess uh, data centers would need cable operators. Jens has mentioned that already as well. Uh, but also, um, the um, the uh, data cent data centers needs needs data center operators needs cable operators and vice versa. And that is uh, obviously another problem. That as much as you need to go into into the regions, um, having a data center in in in, a, in a, yeah, somewhere on on a, on a, on, a, on a green field. Let me put it this way: where there's no connectivity, just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, even sure. if there is a is a, is a potential consumer for say the heat for that uh, coming from a particular mm -hmm. data center. Yeah? So, um, uh, and and what we haven't yet talked about is possibly the need for like smaller data centers, even like robot data centers. Uh, which possibly, most likely, even would come uh, as a as a requirement from a, from a universal uh, fourth excuse me fifth street um, deployment because then you would have latencies that are in the in the in the, in the milliseconds or even sub milliseconds um, where the computing power uh, is actually needed not central um, in, a, in a centralized way say in Frankfurt or in Berlin or in Hamburg but possibly like really next to where the action happens, whatever whatever the, the sensors communicating to each other via 5G uh, would actually need as, 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 as computing power um, as a short answer to the need for collaboration between mm -hmm. the cable operators and the data centers. Okay, yeah. thank you. I, I would like yeah, yeah. to add something to that. First, uh, we were talking about new data centers and new being built data centers. Looking into the enterprise market in Germany, especially, there are a lot of small, very small, very old data centers who have to be upgraded and who are totally inefficient when it comes to energy consumption, power usage efficiency, and uh, of course, climatization. So we will have to see that we take all these small, very inefficient data centers and consolidate them into few high efficient data centers in the region. And then we have the symbiosis with the network operators as well, because they are tasked to transport the data mm -hmm. and synchronize, mm -hmm. enable the synchronization and um, high availability enablement of these services. And yes, I do see a lot of edge computing mm -hmm. demand in the near future. But nevertheless, we will also see the um, computing centers where we have the cloud services and the um, consolidated 
server equipment of our enterprise customers, the Mittelstand mm -hmm. data centers where they operate their EHP systems, ERP systems, whatever. Yeah. We will need them as well. Say, Sami, do you want to jump in? Uh, yes, uh, I can uh, add that uh, the potential is there. Uh, cables are under uh, oceans and under seas. Um, for uh, Africa, for example, uh, there are uh, at, uh, currently uh, four uh, undersea ca cables that are surrounding all Africa. Mm -hmm. There are uh, seven cables in the eastern side under the uh, Indian Ocean and uh, seven in the other side under uh, the uh, Atlantic Oceans. Uh, and uh, 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 cable operators are developing, and, and uh, they are uh, uh, in uh, uh, working on uh, new cables. But uh, the the potential of um, data center and cloud computing is not really uh, exploited that uh, uh, that much in Africa. Uh -huh. uh, actually, there are uh, about 100 or less than 100 data centers in all Africa. Uh, it, it represents about 1.3% uh, of all uh, world, uh, the, the data, data centers worldwide. Uh -huh. So uh, I think with the, 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 the new technologies uh, and the development, IoT, if, uh, use it for uh, smart cities, smart media buildings, and uh, with the um, use of uh, maybe the 5G and the edge computing, there will be uh, the need to have uh, new dat data centers and uh, uh, maybe uh, satellite data center, uh, data centers, uh, micro data centers in the edge uh, to be uh, to allow um, maybe the, the short, short late latency needed for uh, some use cases. So I think. Uh, the, pot the potential is there. The coordination uh, must be uh, led by uh, the governments and um, the regulators because uh, the uh, cable uh, operators are working uh, and prepare, preparing the land for the, uh, cl the cloud computing uh, operators the cloud service providers, but uh, there are uh, some uh, barriers to uh, develop in this activity and these businesses, like uh, regulations, like uh, maybe the um, cultural aspects, uh, like uh, the, the, the cost of uh, data centers that, that are really uh, very high, very expensive for uh, business uh, uh, operators. So uh -huh. I think uh, these barriers must be led, must be uh, managed and coordinated by the uh, regulators and the governments to, to, uh, to go further to, the, to develop in the um, data center activities. Okay, thank you. Jens? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, you know, you know, Africa itself is, is a really large emerging market for B2C business as well for B2B business. And, you know, if you look, or if you look in the past and how much more CK will air and, and uh, landing station are coming into Western and Eastern Africa, I think is underpinning this, that is really, that it is, slowly but surely is growing uh of course it's a huge country and you know you you where where many people are living in in some clusters so and that, that is that is a challenge uh, to uh because currently africa is, is of course of it infrastructure is underdeveloped in mm -hmm. a way and i and you know I, and i believe now in our time in our days that b2c business like you know um social media business away they are a huge driver for it because you're like you know there are some consortium i think facebook uh, is is uh, investing into a sea cable mm -hmm. somewhere to into africa i think it's on the on the uh, on the east coast but not quite sure so and i think what you know once this is installed 
and you know you have the people are using this and you have the inter and you have the IT infrastructure more developed then you know you will also see a big push that will come from the B2B business for sure then uh, because yeah that, that is it, you know, I, I think that is one of the major uh, major uh, markets that we are we are looking after so of course and then you know it's always like what came first right? the hen or the egg right so somebody needs to start it's always I mean and that is the that is that is the, the big tricky thing for all of us because you know it needs one thing it needs money it needs investment mm -hmm. and who's going to pay of course you have the huge the giants in the companies like Facebook Google and the first, you know, tons, millions of money, uh, of dollars that they can spend into. So, um, so there it needs also regulation, right? Otherwise, it will become wild, wild west, and that is that's also a little bit uh, uh, the tough situation. But yeah, I mean, generally, it's good that we see kind of these investments uh, into these emerging markets. Again, then it, you know, everybody needs to make the homework because you know Africa, the country, the con the the, uh, uh, the continent will need to be connected to the rest of the world, right? So because you know the traffic flows all over, right? We, it goes to US, it goes to Europe, it goes to it Asia. It would also maybe Georgia. be nice uh, if the if, if if the content is on the continent, definitely, because it will be. They build all the sea cables. That's fantastic, but content. it all moves to <laughs> to the US or to to Europe and then goes back again. Yeah. Which is actually a little bit content matters, of course. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's it's uh, it's different things, but politics is very uh, big thing. Mm -hmm. um, I would just wanted to to add uh, something to what Sami has just said about uh, governments and regulators, and um, I would be happy to see uh, a regulator stepping in. How should I phrase this? if there is a competition issue so if there's hardly any competition then obviously it might be uh, the regulator uh, to enforce competition by um, just say putting a little bit of say force on the incumbent operator whatever the incumbent operator is and as soon as as we we see increasing competition within the various fields and subjects uh, of it let me put it this way uh, then the the it would be the duty of the of the regulator mm -hmm. um, to retreat more and more because we obviously then would have a fully fledged market. Uh, in in this regard, I, I guess I just can say that uh, Bundesnetzagentur, the federal agency mm -hmm. for networks, which is in charge of telco networks but also electricity and gas, um, did a pretty good job as in mm -hmm. um, like. Um, like 20 years ago, possibly it was only Deutsche Telekom being like still a, a federal agency, thing, yeah, uh, being the, the sole operator for telco networks here in Germany. And uh, since then, um, uh, by putting up regulations, but also retreating from regulations within the next last 20 years, uh, we saw uh, we, we developed a, a pure and, and good market uh, mm -hmm. within for, for telco operations with here in Germany. Obviously, there's still something, um, as always, there's still something left to do. But uh, in terms of competition, um, uh, regulation authorities can do a lot, but eventually also need to retreat themselves from their own business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That is All right. Um, Sami, just, just, just quickly to you, um, just because talking about subsea and data centers, but also on the internet exchanges and and, and what role um, I mean, for, for, for what is your take on that? What what role does the internet exchange appearing play and and and, and help to generate actually um, uh, new value added services to drive actually growth and 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 to maximize uh, revenues? How do you see that? I think uh, they have a major role uh, in developing the um, interaction between uh, the big operators, but the, the GAFA uh, and the, or the GAFAM and the local operators, and uh, they have uh, their uh, responsibility on. Um, uh, securing the exchange, but the securing at the same time the privacy and the um, security of uh, data uh, ex uh, exchanges. So uh, there, there have a big role to to, to play. For uh, I, uh, I'm still talking uh, in uh, an African uh, point of view. Sure. Uh, uh, our uh, 
may be our infrastructure and our uh, internet exchange operators are not uh, in the same level of uh, mastering of the, the, the market and mastering the uh, technical aspects. So uh, they need uh, to uh, give trust to the... the you muted you know, yourself. Muted. Okay. Uh, I said uh, they need to uh, provide real trust to the local uh, operator and local local uh, investors in the um, cloud uh, uh, in the cloud uh, services. Uh, okay. So uh, so that we can uh, maybe uh, uh, use the maximum bandwidth, much maximum uh, throughput and. Uh, uh, wh why not um, uh, give profit or uh, to the, 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 the or uh, assure the um, uh, the return on, on investment of the, the installed already installed and uh, in already deployed uh, subsea cables. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, um, looking a little bit about time, gentlemen, we're already going over and I have Laura here with me who's already watching me. <laughs> Shall we, um, but, but, but a quick one thing I wanted to, and maybe you can, you can use it as well. So some, uh, some, some, some last um, uh, famous words or how do you, how do you see the future? <laughs> but um, you quickly mentioned during the AI enabled, enabled uh, data center. So the smaller ones, you just, what yeah. would be the idea? Can, can you please share with us uh, quick, quickly the idea? Um, thinking about some experiments like Microsoft did with subsea data centers who have to be absolutely autonomous mm -hmm. and to have the capability to, to some extent, repair themselves and operate completely independently. That is something I would see in the future for um, the edge data centers. Mm -hmm. At least we will need people in the bigger ones to fix the big mistakes, but nevertheless, the smaller ones can be fixed by early developed robot, robots. Mm -hmm. And maybe so with, the, with the help from, 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 from the governments or whatever lower, higher government it is, mm -hmm. to encourage that to maybe as well invest in this because they do Absolutely. see the need and the purpose for it, right? Yeah. So, Absolutely. if is it in lowering the taxation or actually putting some money on the table to, to 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 make it happen and still have their earning models because that's what the, what we are talking about yeah so that that would uh, that would help okay Carson, from your side um again once more on on the internet exchange points as, mm -hmm. uh, as Sammy, yes. Sammy just mentioned this um i guess they are really key for a healthy digital business in whatever area we whatever area we think about because um, uh, if you look at at say autonomous network operators mm -hmm. that are not the classic network operators any longer you mentioned enterprise customers mm -hmm. already uh, they would have means to directly connect to an internet exchange point and if we talk enterprise um, uh, that's essentially a done deal, deal yeah. um, them being really autonomous in their network operations. I see more and more less, more and more uh, smaller businesses as, as well becoming autonomous. And with that, you would uh, be a direct, you would be able to become a direct customer, not via an internet service provider, for example, but a direct customer of an internet exchange point. And given the fact that an internet exchange point uh, does not do only classic peering any longer, but also do PNIs, private yeah, network yeah. interconnection, and so forth. Uh, these small to medium-sized businesses would also uh, be in a position um, to pick their network operators, their connectivity providers, mm -hmm. like from, from what's on the rooster with, with these particular internet exchange point operators. Yeah? And by that, I would say an internet exchange point uh, is, 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 is a good, it's really a good thing to have as it, as it facilitates business in a certain country, in a certain region, or um, I mean, like a region like it's a bit the biggest, uh, like Europe, but also in a, in, in a region within a country, say mm -hmm. the Berlin region, for example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just wanted to mention this. Uh, just okay. to add yes, two please. things on that. That is one of the reasons why we as carriers and network operators 
hate and love these internet exchanges. Yeah. They buy from us the high bandwidth, mm -hmm. yeah. but on the other hand, they take away some of the services we provide. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, I think it's absolutely essential that these internet exchange points maintain a certain level of neutrality. neutrality. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They have to be neutral, as some of you said it too, uh, stay out of political games and mm -hmm. Yeah. build a platform to exchange data freely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, just a very quick round to the gentleman. Sami, what do you see happening in the future? Or what are you hoping to happen, especially in Africa? Um, I hope um, special coordination between uh, the countries, the African countries at least, uh, and why not, why not uh, 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 bilateral uh, coordination between African uh, countries and um, uh, the rest of the world uh, mm -hmm. to develop Africa, uh, to develop uh, uh, cables and cloud in Africa. But uh, I hope that uh, governments uh, give incentives to uh, businesses to uh, develop uh, the cloud infrastructure, or at least uh, uh, push the big operators to build uh, data centers that uh, maybe uh, can be uh, used as uh, for uh, for startups to develop the cloud uh, the, the, the cloud market and the cloud uh, needs and uh, I hope that regulators. Uh, uh, talk about uh, between each other about the barriers uh, to uh, develop uh, uh, bilateral or, or uh, inter-countries inter uh, usage of uh, cloud because uh, between uh, a country or another, maybe uh, there, there, there is a barrier, a, a regulatory barrier or a privacy barrier like uh, uh, our uh, regulation that uh, uh, doesn't uh, allow uh, the transborder uh, uh, data. Uh, the transborder. Uh, about the data, data protection. Data, yes. Yes. Yeah, data protection. Mm -hmm. That's it. Maybe uh, the, the the governments should uh, encourage and uh, give incentives to develop uh, the okay. da the cloud and data centers, and uh, the, the regulatory uh, aspects uh, should be uh, dealt with. Okay, thank you, Sami. Some last words, Jens. Yeah. Anything Finally. to add? What Finally. do you foresee? What What do we see? What will we experience? more demand for data centers? And I hope more companies of our size will be encouraged to invest in both data centers in the region or in the edge. With the help from uh, from the governments, maybe a bit, a bit the, right? That, that would help, be right? Perfectly fine. Okay, gentlemen, thank you so much. Sami, thank you so much, gentlemen here. It has been an honor having you here and, and yeah. sharing all your knowledge with us. So thank you very much. Thank you, New Telco. Thank you, Jens, for your, uh, for your keynote presentation. Thank you so much uh enjoy the day here sammy i wish you all the best eh? bye, thank you. Bye, bye, bye. thank you bye, bye. and for everybody out there bye bye